today's video, I'm gonna be going over the Blue Yeti EB70, uh, the power station that I have now, and primarily that's used to power the fridge, the new fridge I have from Set Power USA. I believe it's a 45 liter uh, and it's dual zone. So absolutely love that so far. I'll show you a little bit more detail in a bit. Let's go over some of the advantages and disadvantages of this power station as well as using it for the fridge. I also use it to charge camera batteries, drone batteries, laptop, tablet. And I think later on in this video, I'm also gonna try and run my editing PC off of uh, the power station just for fun. And we'll go back to the garage and test some more stuff out, see what it can power, what it can't power, so that you know what you wanna buy. I'll also go over some of the stuff that this power station does, maybe over some of the other power stations and what they may be better at than this one, just so you have, you're fully informed on making the best decision you can. So without further ado, let's take a closer look at the EB70. All right, so let's just take a closer look at the unit. We'll go over the DC output, AC output, and the charging. So I can charge it right off the inverter in the Lexus. Uh, you can also charge it off of a cigarette lighter or using solar. And so all those options are super convenient. Usually I just charge it during while driving if I'm out on like a multi-day trip. Uh, for the DC output, it's got 100 watt USB-C, which I don't think any other unit has, any other brand. Uh, so you can charge your MacBook, iPad, iPhone, um, many other Android devices like super quickly. It's also got two USBs, uh, normal USBs. And then the last thing is the cigarette lighter port that works super well with the fridge. Um, you're probably wondering how long it can power the fridge for. So that on average is about two days. It pulls power about half the time or one third of the time. So if you do the math on a 700 watt unit, then it can run for about 48 hours. Um, and you can get longer, like two and a half days, up to three days. Uh, but if you use it as a, the dual zone in the fridge as a freezer, part of it as a freezer, then you're gonna have to like cut that in half. Um, so if ice cream sandwiches or frozen food is important to you, then you gotta keep that in mind that it's only gonna last about 24-ish hours and you're gonna have to be able to charge the unit in one of those ways. So moving on to the AC output, it's got 700 watts, which is super high and allows you to run a lot of things. You can run smaller coffee makers, even electric kettles. Uh, you can run a blow dryer if you want on like a lower setting. Uh, where it's come in handy for us on set, for my company Black House Cinema, is we charge these large Ronin batteries for our gimbal on the end of the crane. And those batteries were pulling about 200 watts. So this still had lots of headroom and we were able to charge those batteries while still using the Ronin on set. So that's super convenient being out in the middle of nowhere and still being able to charge really important camera gear. That's part of my job as well as just normal Sony batteries, Canon batteries, drone batteries and stuff like that. When I'm camping, it allows me to charge an iPad if I needed to or run string lights. And of course the fridge, which is the most important part if you're out on a multi-day trip, having a fridge is awesome. I used to just run coolers with ice in the past and yeah, that works, but obviously it's a pain to deal with ice, draining it out, having some part of your food get all soaked with water and it gets into the different bags. I think we've all been there and I love how technology has advanced to the point where you can get a power station like this and an awesome fridge like this for an affordable price. And yeah, just make this, makes the uh, camping experience a lot more enjoyable. So this fridge is from Set Power. It's a 45 liter dual zone fridge. It's a huge upgrade from what I had. I had like a 15 liter fridge. So this gives me a lot more room for drinks and food as well as potentially being a freezer. I remember one day on set, uh, I brought ice cream sandwiches for our team because now I can, because I can set part of this up as a freezer or the whole thing as a freezer. But moving back to the Blue Eddy, uh, it's also got 15 watt wireless charging on top, which I use all the time because the plug for my phone is broken. So I can only wirelessly charge my phone. And yeah, I'll, we'll go back to the garage and I'll plug a lot of stuff in and show you what it can power, what it can't power. And I love watching those videos, seeing what they are capable of. So we'll do that and we'll take an even closer look at the unit.
All right, we are back in the garage. Let's test some stuff, see what it can charge, what it can't charge, and then also go over some of my favorite features and some of the things I don't like. So let's start there. My favorite things about the EB70 is the compact size, this flip up handle, which unlike some other ones, the handle's locked in place. It allows you to stack stuff on top. Uh, I love all the different ports. They're ports that work for me, especially the USB-C and having four AC ports. Uh, the built-in light is nice, a little bit gimmicky uh, because it's shining outwards. It'd be nice if there was like some way to like have the light shine down onto the port. So if you're like, it's dark and it's camp you're camping and stuff like that. Um, the other thing that kind of bugs me, uh, two things about the screen is when you press it, it goes dim quite fast. So it's like, sometimes you want to see what's charging. It's like dims really fast. And considering how big the battery is, I think they could have the screen stay on a little longer. These lights to let you know if DC or AC is on are a little dim. I wouldn't, I would prefer like a little bit brighter button. I know other people have made that same complaint. And then the last thing is I really wish that they showed a percentage of exactly how much battery is left. It kind of goes in increments of 20%, which is like, it's fine. Um, obviously, if you can see what something's drawing for power, you can figure out how long it's gonna last. But some of the other units uh, will tell you how long it'll last. Like it'll do the calculation for you and show that on screen. But that's all like minor stuff. The most important stuff to me is like all the ports and that they work and that they're high output. So without further ado, let's plug some stuff in and see what works, what doesn't work, and we'll go from there. All right, so let's say you're camping. It's a little hot outside, you need a fan. I have a USB fan that is somewhere in my camping bin, which isn't here. I just moved into my new place. Um, but you're gonna need a fan, right? So we gotta plug that in. Turn on the AC power. Plug that in. All right. That's drawing 11 watts. So not bad. That would run for several, several days. So, okay, well, maybe we want to watch some Netflix. We'll plug in my laptop because it's dead. And there we go. Now we're at 50, 53 watts. So I've been using my camera all day to film these YouTube videos for you guys. And my camera batteries are dead. So we're going to have to plug those in as well. Two of them here. All right, turn on the DC. Nice, 48 watts, laptops charging, fans on, batteries are charging, but you know that's not enough because I'm hot, but I also need to charge my gimbal. Get those steady shots. All right, we'll charge USB-C to USB-C. So these are 200 watts, um, 100 watts each, which is super nice. Okay, we're charging, let's see what we're at. We're only at 62 watts, so lots and lots of room left. Let's take it up a notch. I'll go over this quickly. So I already tested this water kettle. Um, obviously, you can just boil water. Some of the smaller water, water kettles will draw a lot less power. This is a big uh, one from my kitchen, so it overloaded the Blue Yeti. So, but let's try something else that I was impressed with. Let's say you want to make some toast, you know, make some toast in the morning. So we'll plug that in and we'll drop it down. Now I hear the fan kick on and we're at 660, 70 watts. So now we're, we're getting up there, but uh, my phone's almost dead. So we got to charge that too. And yeah, all right, because that's not enough. You know, we got our toast toasting, camera batteries charging, Ronan's charging, fans charging, phone is charging. I also have my batteries for my lights so you guys can see what I'm doing. Plug that in here. See what we're at? We are at 660 watts. So some of this stuff varies obviously, like the toaster. And uh, let's turn on the light. And yeah, I don't know how else I could max it out. 
I think if I drop the other side of the toaster, I'll max it out, so we'll do that. There we go, overload. So we overloaded the AC side, so it's got that safety, it shuts it off. As you can see, the fan stopped, everything stops. So I would like unplug whatever you tried to plug in. The light did not turn off though. Okay, and then it just takes a second, you can turn everything back on. Now fans back on and everything's charging again. So it is nice that it has that feature. Um, so you can do like a toaster that is two pieces of toast, not four, depending on the toaster. If you're heating something, that's gonna draw a ton of power. So heating up water, an induction cooktop, or trying to toast toast, or a hair dryer, that, this, that stuff, you're gonna need a bigger unit, or you know, if you're camping stuff, you just don't need it. You can boil your water on a stove, uh, you can dry your hair with a towel, you can toast your toast in a pan or over the fire, however you want to. So if you were just charging batteries overall, you'll never like max this thing out. I was charging those massive Ronin batteries for like a $12,000 gimbal and it was only pulling 200 watts. And so here, I'll plug in one more thing because you might want tools on the trail. I know people charge like their chainsaw batteries or their impact batteries. So we'll take one from up here. So with all the batteries charging in the fan, we're at about 68 watts, which is nothing. But let's say you want to charge this six amp hour Milwaukee battery. And you are at 136. So you could charge one, two, or three Milwaukee batteries simultaneously while charging everything else. Obviously, you're gonna eventually run out of power if you have all this stuff charging, but you could also be running your vehicle during the day, charging it back up. And it's just nice that it can charge all this stuff, but also has all the safety limits in place. So that about wraps up this video. Obviously, I use it mainly to power the fridge for several days and charge my camera batteries. I'm assuming people out there are about the same. You might want to charge tools and your fridge or anything in between. But overall, I'm super happy with the EB70. I think 700 watts is a good range of power and the price point is on par because it's usually you're paying about a dollar per watt with some of the other units and this unit isn't $700. And you get 700 watts of consistent power with the AC output which is super nice for charging stuff that can't be charged by the USB-C and USBs as well as the cigarette port for your fridge. So other than that, I'm super happy with the Set Power USA fridge. I'll leave links below for both of those products. All right, so I'm running two monitors and my editing computer with my sound system on the Blue Yeti. And it's only pulling 160 watts. So I could run this computer like in a power outage for, I don't know, at least five hours. So pretty good. I'll leave links below for both of those products. I think they pair super well together and I would highly recommend them. Thanks for watching today's video and I'll catch you next time.